keepers can do stuff one way yeah. and, and make saves and keepers would do it another way and you might say, oh, that doesn't look right or this looks right. There's no one way. No, it's yeah. really important to work really hard at, at your techniques. Mm. Um, and playing a lot of games is really important yeah. because that's where you really learn just yeah. to um, let individual mistakes not define mm. who you are yeah. as, a, as a goalkeeper. If you make a mistake, you're not this, you're, not, you're not rubbish. Mm. Because it's difficult, it's difficult yeah. being a keeper. Yeah. When I'm training with my brothers, we all have always um, have a camera. Yeah. You don't want to be you gotta be strong mm. to to come back from those tough times and just you just keep putting yourself out there. Um, sometimes it's not about reaching the 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 very top. Mm. Sometimes just about you know, enjoying enjoying playing wherever you are. Yeah. When it's, there's there'll be tough moments and good times and just about um, taking those in and having as much fun as possible. So we're back for episode eight of Keeping It Out The Net, still season one, and today I'm really excited for this one because it's someone who's living and breathing it. He's in the game right now, in the trenches, and uh, yeah, someone who is the product of the Fulham Academy. He's also spent some time at Chipstead Football Club, uh, Maidenhead United, and then more recently, Bournemouth Football Club. Part of the famous team that got onto the fifth round of the FA Cup, uh, played against Everton, and also beat Bournemouth, so I couldn't be happier to introduce my eighth guest for keeping it out of the net, Tay Ashley Hammond. Tay, thanks for doing it. Yeah, no pleasure. Thank you, Alan. So, um, obviously, I know you've got quite a um, good history with um, football in the family. You've got a younger brother, uh, Luca, and uh, he plays for Fulham as well. But what got you into goalkeeping in the first place? Well, I think initially when I first started playing just at Sunday League level, probably because I didn't like to run. Okay. Um, I was used to running about, used to tackling, um, probably used to my feet as well when I was quite young. Um, and yeah, just got chucked in goal, loved diving about, yeah. loved getting muddy, loved to throw myself in front of the ball. Whatever. Yeah. Just felt a bit better than, than scoring, I think, to me. Um, and from, from then on, I've always, always been in goal. Was there, was there like a, a parent or a role model that kind of really spurred you on as you went, got older? My dad sort of played in goal when he was younger. Not to a, any sort of level, but he, he played in goal when he was younger. It was just by chance, I think, that I ended up playing Sunday League with, with mates and, um, and, and going in goal, but him with a bit of backing, I think, yeah. was when he forced me into, into goal when he saw us a bit useless out on, yeah. on pitch. Yeah, I mean, from what I've seen, I've watched a handful of games, seen you play, in my opinion, I think you're hugely successful for your age as well. Uh, but what, how did you go from playing Sunday League to then Fulham, uh, getting into that realm of mm -hmm. football? Well, it was by chance, I think a Fulham scout was there. Yeah. They picked, picked me up from there, went into the development centre at Fulham for a few weeks, then had a six week trial at Fulham when I was at yeah. eight. And then, yeah, got, got signed when I, was, when I was eight at Fulham and, and I've, I've been there ever since. So yeah. it's just, just by chance that someone was there watching me and I was some muddy Sunday league pitch somewhere and, yeah. and that's how I ended up at Fulham. Obviously, um, you've had some big highlights already. I think you're only 23 at the moment, but. Obviously, I suppose the standout highlight this season was playing against Bournemouth and then playing against Everton. I remember listening on a talk radio and hearing your name and you made a big save. Um, but how, how was that afterwards? How was that for you playing against Bournemouth and then Everton? Yeah, it was, it was one of those moments where you could almost finish on, on, those, on one of those one of those games and just absolutely the, the vastness of, of Goodison Park with it packed out the noise. It was kind of what you set out to, to play football for Bournemouth. Was equally also not as big as, as what Goodison was, yeah, yeah. but it was it was amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and surprisingly, when you get into a moment like that, you just think it's really cool and kind of the pressure. Yeah, definitely. Sort of relaxed a bit, and I just I thoroughly enjoyed that. And a great bunch of lads to, to do it with. Yeah, like, yeah. Born, and unfortunately, we went out, but we went kind of toe to toe there too, yeah. for a, for a good bit. And Bournemouth gave them a good game as well. Obviously, I was with Scott Parker and his team at, mm. at Fulham, so that was a bit of that. Added a little bit more of a. It's kind of what you live for, their moments. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I've got some good pictures of, of, of me playing. And, yeah, there's some, some yeah. Nice moments in. Obviously, um, you know, being around Fulham and that's one thing, but um, nothing can prepare you sometimes for playing in a big stadium around that many people. How did you, um, 
mentally cope with that and if I let me people with what was at stake as well. I think you just have to do your best to, to block out block out fans and stuff. Yeah. Most of the time they can give you a good bit of stick and mm. that can sort of ease the ease the pressure off and not make it so serious for you. Um, but I think it's it's when you as you build up you start with a, a few hundred and then a few thousand and yeah. a few tens of thousands. Yeah, yeah. You kind of build up. But obviously if every time when it's your first playing in front of a new crowd that you're yeah. in front of that can be pretty scary. But once you get a bit more used to it and you've done it a few times and, and the pressure of it sort of uh, subsides a bit and then you see it just as, as a as a cool thing and you yeah. just go to enjoy as opposed to on a bit of pressure yeah. and do the best to go and enjoy those those moments because that's what you have to do. Yeah. When you've got moments like that you have to, to take them in and just um, Enjoy them, enjoy them for what they are, and get the hard on and over. So, what, what I've noticed about you uh, when I've seen you play and even watching your TV is your very calm, effective character. Um, is that just your personality, or is that something you worked at? Were you at one point quite not irrational, but like quite um, you got in heat at the moment, or have you always been quite calm and collective? Um, I think I'm quite calm now. It can be half a front, yeah, I reckon. Um, at times before games like that, you can inside be yeah. shaking yourself a bit mm. because those are pretty scary games and there's people watching and you can put loads of different situations into your head. Yeah. But I think as I've as I've got a bit older, you kind of go out to to enjoy as yeah. opposed to um, getting nervous and overthinking about loads of different scenarios that can happen. As I've got older you kind of just detach from mm. um, what might happen in the game. Yeah. Um, it's difficult because mm. you kind of don't do anything before a game, so you you sit there almost and yeah. you can't really help what comes into your mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you have to you have to sort of yeah detach from from anything bad that can happen, which which you can put pressure on yourself for. Um, but just go out and because I know I believe in for me when I go into games that good things will happen. Yeah, and yeah. Good things that I'll enjoy will happen. So um, don't focus on any of the negatives that could happen and then go out to enjoy the the occasion that was in football I play for fun so yeah. every time I go out yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun for me and so the the pressure can kind of just just wait off in, in that sense. I'm guessing um, so much certainty comes from experience. How valuable has playing Bournemouth this season, playing a big part of it obviously uh, I would have thought you weren't expecting to do that obviously Nathan got injured. Um, but how valuable has that been playing and then Nathan coming back in and learning from him? Because obviously in a Fulham environment like you only get so much mm -hmm. and you come out to a team like this and it's um, everything's on the line trying to get promoted. Yeah. How valuable has it been this season for you? Mm, it's, been, it's been really valuable. It's, there's a huge difference between playing 23 games in the academy games yeah. and coming to this level. This is where you truly, yeah. truly learn. Like the physicality. Yeah, how to how to win games. Yeah. And how to, especially in this league, it's extremely physical. For keepers specifically, dealing with balls in the box, yeah. balls over the top, balls come back to front in, mm. in a matter of seconds. Yeah. So, um, getting that experience at this level, sometimes it's, it's, it's almost more difficult mm. playing in these games because of those tendencies that you yeah. have in the games. And it's excellent experience for goalkeepers because for, for exactly that, dealing with crosses and dealing with through balls that you might not get, get in, in other games. And when you get thrush, th um, thrown into um, games with bigger people who are more strong than you and faster and quicker, it brings, brings your level up at the same time yeah. and brings your learning about quicker. Yeah. Um, so when you do that from a young age, it's, it's really vital for young keepers to, to do that. I mean, the idea of these interviews I've done, this is the eighth one, is to give someone, if they're a young goalkeeper, maybe a teenager, or even coming to the end of their career, just to try and make it to the highest level possible. And um, someone like yourself is on the up. But what can um, what can a young goalkeeper do? I mean, mindset is a huge part of goalkeeping. And obviously, if you can't, if you can't take the, the harsh realities of it, then you're not fit to be a goalkeeper. But how do you overcome anything from a setback, like a mistake, or maybe a, an injury that holds you back? How do you mentally, like, is there anything practical you do to keep yourself going and motivate and not get down on things. Mm. I don't do anything specifically, but for mistakes, I reckon you just have to um, let individual mistakes not define mm. who you are yeah. as, a, as a goalkeeper. If you make a mistake, you're not this, you're not rubbish. Mm. Because it's difficult, it's difficult yeah. being a keeper and you don't, and you don't, you don't save everything. Um, and you just have to go out there and do your best. But as I was pointing to, that when you make a mistake, that's yeah. you're not this, you're not that. Yeah. You just have to 
kind of just ignore those things that happen and go on and, and try to make the next save, which is, which is what I try and yeah. do. And mistakes are inevitable for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just getting through those moments are important and not letting that define you or letting you overthink those moments. Mm. Um, and then just carry on enjoy because people generally they don't as it's, it's obviously it defines more as a as a keeper the mistakes can lead to goals yeah. and that's why it's painful being yeah, a goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the time people don't think that much of you and no. um, lots of lots of people make mistakes and it's just about those next moments doing your best to yeah. try and uh, keep the ball out is is all you is all you can do, and not take it too yeah. too seriously. I think is really important as well. Because it, it can be lonely, can't it? That's why it's important you have like you got Martin here, mm -hmm. a great coach. You got someone like Nathan. Support network, I suppose, is key. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it's important you have the keepers with the same attitude that are like if the ball goes in, balls balls gone in, and then yeah, you yeah. kind of go for the next one, and we'll get around each other when the keeper makes a save. You're all buzzing. Yeah, um, but it's important when you do make those saves that. You are you are really happy about them and you're buzzing because that's that's why that's yeah. where we, we have fun and yeah. mistakes are a part of it and it's it's good for building up that that mental strength when bad things do happen that it's they happen yeah you've just gotta move on and just um, yeah not take it too seriously when mm. you're, you're a goalkeeper change how you see it as far yeah, as def yeah. yeah definitely um, if you take it too seriously then it's gonna it's gonna really put a huge burden on you mm. I've found that in time when you are um, when you really overanalyze those mistakes, as mm. opposed to just forgetting about them. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of people who see your own mistakes will will do. Yeah, as opposed to so that you don't sit there and overanalyze and then go into the next do your best. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a good policy to have. Uh, obviously, you've worked with a lot of good goalkeepers. You've got your younger brother. You've got Nathan. I'm sure there's been others. Maybe at Maidenhead at Chipstead. Uh, what is the number one thing you've learned in terms of mindset? And a characteristic um, that kind of sets them apart in terms of yeah mindset and character. Mm. Yeah, I think I think all, all these people that I've worked with they have an, an attitude that um, they don't they don't get too too down about things and um, I think all the people that I work with have been amazing. Amazing goalkeepers, my coach have been, been, been amazing. Yeah, um, I think from, they're, they're positive. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's really important to to be positive and just have a good laugh and stuff. When you go out, then it's then it's serious and you do your best. But always have a laugh and have fun. It's, it's yeah, really, really important. Obviously, um, then you've got the technical side of things. Uh, many things. There's too many to talk about just one interview. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned just watching the game, like thing like distribution, like kicking, like you have to be able to kick a certain distance and accuracy to play at national league level. Um, and then crosses, I think crosses is something that makes someone stand out. Someone who can't deal with crosses well won't be playing at a higher level. Um, is there something you would say that a goalkeeper can really work on that is a must? It's one of the most important things. Like, is it crossing? Is it your kicking? Is it just basic handling? Is that the one thing that's most important? Yeah, definitely. But the most important thing, you've got to make the right decision no matter how good you are at one thing. You can be extremely good at, at crossing or dealing with through balls. But if you're if you're overly confident or not confident, then you don't make the, the right decisions. If you're if you're really confident dealing with through balls or crossing, you're absolutely bugging yeah, and yeah, yeah. And sometimes you can come for the wrong balls that you might not necessarily need to. You find a lot of the time if you if you sit back and a lot of, and let defenders deal with things mm. and not sort of run away from the goal, then you can you can end up keeping a lot of clean yeah. shoots I find with especially with the defenders at Bournemouth. Huge guys if you allow them to deal with a lot of stuff. Obviously when it's clear for the keeper to deal with it, yeah, they can yeah. deal with it. But if you can let them deal with it and stay back. Because you see a lot of goals go in where keepers have come for things and it's like just over the defender's head. Yeah. And they haven't they've got something on it but it's not it's not a great distance or you might have said necessarily didn't come for that and then they've out of position. Yeah. And then it's really difficult to recover. I find if you stay quite close to the goal at times and not come for things, mm. then you can put things in the striker's mind where they might not have had a shot if yeah, you yeah. come for a cross and you're running all the way back to get back in position. So I've found that being quite stable mm. behind the back the back three here. So positioning, positioning yeah, is clear. Yeah, well, yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Being in the right position to do the things is important, but I found that if you can a lot of the time let them deal with things 
and not necessarily have to come for stuff where it's like seventy five percent I should be coming for or whatever. Mm. Um, then you, you don't make the strike. You don't make the strikers mind up for him. Yeah. So if I'm coming for things and I'm just taking off the defender's head. Yeah. Um, because I really want to come for him. Yeah. Try and try and make a good impression or whatever. Then I'm I'm, I'm back and stay when the striker might turn out. Yeah. And play wide. Mm. And then they don't they don't score in the end. Yeah. Obviously a million different things can happen. I can come out and punch it. It goes for miles and we score. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, but I think just adding stability as well. Not making the strikers mind up. Like, yeah, it's a good, it's a good strategy. So, if you um, answer sort of next, thing, if you went back ten years mm. and uh, you were sort of starting again, what would be something you would really do differently in terms of how you approach your goalkeeping? Mm. Um, I think it's it's really important to work really hard at your techniques. Mm. Um, and playing a lot of games is really important yeah. because that's where you really learn. Yeah, when you, it's great having your toolbox. You yeah. have your toolbox and you've got to be able to select out all your different tools and then you've got to be able to judge distances between you and defenders on through balls, you and defenders yeah. on crosses, flights on these, um, coming for crosses and dealing with, with bodies. Um, so playing a lot of games is really important. Um, but yeah, the tool, you've got to have the right tools in the, in the toolbox. You've got to be able to deal with all the stuff in, in training. Um, I'm and guessing decision making only comes from that experience. Yeah, yeah. That comes from playing a lot of games and um, that's where you'll see see most improvement. And your career is not on the, the training pitch as well, your career yeah. is in the, in the games. Mm. So when you play the, the games, that's where the most challenge will come. And that's where you'll make mistakes, but coming through those mistakes and playing more games, that's how yeah, yeah. people will, will, um, will improve a lot. And also, I think I would take myself a bit less, less seriously. It's, yeah. it's difficult nowadays for young people because young people, they like to chat about and they say, oh, so and so is. Maybe second he's rubbish and so and so's rubbish. I've had loads of that. Yeah. That's really yeah, yeah. loads of people like to give their opinion or whatever. But they're not necessarily any good themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, and especially for a keeper, because a lot of the time you can be just on your own and all the team is yeah. having a bit of a whisper here and there, so you feel quite crap about it. Yeah. Myself and my brothers can have spent endless hours sitting out in the garden being ourselves up or sitting out in the car and having a bit of a Bit of tension because so and so has been been bickering over there, yeah. and you felt bad about your own your own stuff. But I found a lot of keepers at Fulham and keepers who obviously made it. They have a the effort attitude where yeah. you don't you make mistakes and, and you forget and you move on. And from your own enjoyment perspective, mm. I would far more enjoy myself if I would just focus on good things that I've done as opposed to um, focusing on any mistakes because I'd probably I'd still be in the same position that I am now. Um, I'd probably have just enjoyed myself a bit more having not focused on a load of mistakes yeah. and taking myself really, really seriously. So, yeah. um, so often there's a lot of good, like, and often, more often than not, you've done a lot of good, and mm-hmm. it's easy to focus on maybe one thing. Well, you can do a million good things, yeah. but it only takes one bad thing yeah. to, to break it all down, as you say. Um, so, just doing one, doing their best to not focus on the, the bad stuff and in the adult because when you're young it's difficult to do that. Yeah. Especially with social media, people want to post stuff that mm-hmm. they, they've done. But perhaps people post one thing but the rest of it is it's not quite the same, so you shouldn't base your own ability on what you see see other people doing. And for one person shouldn't put stuff as up as well saying, I'm amazing so I've done this one thing. Yeah. This yeah. is different because then other other people are looking at Perhaps I'm a bit rubbish because I can't do that. Or. I can imagine being at the level you're at. Um, I mean, I don't know if you use social media much. Do you tend to go on social media and look at stuff, or you quite you separate yourself from you don't like to look at stuff? A bit on and off. Yeah. I can get caught going on and scrolling through the explore pages yeah, and yeah. come across stuff. And it doesn't mind like loading my whole explore page up with, with football stuff. Yeah. Because as soon as it catches me looking at one video and watching that phrase, then they'll put a load more up. But I, I like seeing the good stuff that people have done. Yeah. See people making really good saves. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going on there and then saying, oh, I've not done that, so it's a bit rubbish. But yeah, yeah. you can go either way when you, when you look at it right. But I like to go on there, see what great saves people have made, and um, catch up with all, what the keepers are doing. Mm. There's loads of good in- keeping yeah. Instagram stuff. So I like yeah, to go yeah. on there, see what great saves people have made, and perhaps see stuff that I can integrate into my mm. own game as well. There's, there's a million good keepers out there. And, don't necessarily have to be good. Mm. Keepers can do stuff one way yeah. and, and make saves, and keepers will do it another way, and you might say, oh, that doesn't look right, or this looks right. There's no one way. No, yeah. Um, and you can integrate anything into your own game. You find here with, um, yeah, some, some keepers do it vastly different to others. 
but they make unbelievable, unbelievable yeah. saves. Yeah, and some keepers do it some way, and they might not make saves. And but the effective way is the is that way that might look. Yeah, a bit funny. So there's, there's a million ways. You have that open mindset. You can no, learn from everyone. One hundred percent. Yeah, can take stuff from anywhere. And generally, it's about it's about the outcome, and not necessarily what it what yeah. it looks like. Um, but yeah, social media likes to go on and see a good saves. And, is there um, like a role model maybe in the Premier League or Championship or someone that you look up to over years or more recently that you would say, watch that person because they're worth modeling yourself on? Well, there's, I think in the Premier League, that's the elite and they're all competing themselves, but I think if you get to the top and someone is solely at one thing. Yeah. So Edison's really brave on crosses, yeah. through walls, and his kicking man is, mm. is a joke as well. And his passing, so you could learn that from him. Yeah, De Gea, unbelievable shot stopper. Yeah, um, great hands around his body, great with his um, with his with his feet saves, but also has um, you could pick up on his blocking technique. Yeah, so he's the kind of guy who likes to stand up, stay really late, and he obviously a lot of the time makes a lot of saves. Like yeah, Sanchez the same. They make a lot of saves just blocking. Yeah, as opposed to making a striker's mind aware. A lot of the time you can go to ground and block like that, or block go like that. And the striker just you make his mind because he just put it the other the other side. Yeah. There's a lot of time to make good saves standing up. Um, but not not one. I like to watch games and pick up on what yeah, people yeah. are doing well and 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 add add bits and bobs to my own game watching the watching the elite guys. Yeah, yeah. Is there any like tips you do outside the game? Like do you like to watch back matches? Do you like to study things on YouTube? Do you um, do you set yourself goals? Is there anything outside of the game that you do to help you go to the next level? I think it's important to watch watch back games. I'm not the campaign for watching back games, mm. um, but in the in the long run, it's really important because when you pick up on certain bits that you might not have felt but you did in the game, yeah. you might look back and you thought um, that a through ball came up over the top and you drop back and you a lot of people say, "Oh, maybe you should have come for it." And you look back and see, "Oh, perhaps it could have been a yard, two yards further forward." Yeah. Um, or and just for a lot of technical stuff as well, technique can look a lot different in your own head than it does when you yeah. see it on camera. So that that's important. When I'm training with my brothers, we all have always um, have a camera. Yeah. We don't necessarily watch the whole thing, but we'll see how we're looking, see if it's um, if we think personally that it's um it's we got bits and bobs in the right position. So yeah. I think that's good for to to improve improve one's game. Yeah. What do you um? What's the biggest thing in training you're about? Like, because obviously someone who's maybe not at a professional club that's got a goalkeeping coach, maybe a bit lower down. Yeah. Um, how do you? Like what's the best thing to do? Is it to get a coach, maybe get a group session of one on one, and, and then is it about drilling yourself, getting the repetition in, or is it about just working and breaking things down? What would you say a young keeper can do to get better? Yeah, I think working with a coach is is important. Um, uh, as, as the whole philosophy goes, there's not one way, so a coach would have to be doing the right thing. Yeah, um, Brennan here is 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 great for that because. The, if a keeper's catching it all right, then the coach says catch it this way. Yeah. Um, can get in your head a lot. And if someone's most comfortable doing it one way, then that's important. Um, with, a, with a few keepers, I don't think a huge number is mm. ideal because then you're not getting good reps around, yeah. the, around the coach. Um, and um, yeah, one to one is difficult as well because it's quite tiring for yeah, yeah. One, one keeper on their own. Um, yeah. Are you someone, because some people um, go and become a coach themselves because they say that the best way to learn something is to teach it sometimes. Um, is that something you do or is it it's not something you ever wanted to do like coaching and just focused on playing? Mm. I would love I would love to coach goalkeeping my bread and butter. Yeah. So if I was if I was to do anything that was the easiest for me, yeah, I would do that. I would love to do that. But I think for my motivation would be see keepers make saves and yeah. put on sessions where keepers get to make saves and, yeah. and feel good. Because saving the ball is my favourite thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when I see other keepers make saves, just I'm buzzing from that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I would definitely derive some enjoyment from putting on a session and having keepers fly about and make blocks and make saves. And yeah, yeah. I think that's the best way to go. And make sure if you are taking sessions that the keepers really enjoy and, and are, are improving as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, obviously, your your life comes to the end at Boreham Wood. I'm assuming you're going back to Fulham. What, what's your vision for the future? What's your uh, maybe long term, but what would be ideal for you to be playing in maybe three to five years? Mm. Um, well, I played three seasons of national league football. Mm. Um, I would like to go and push into the push into the league. Yeah, football league. That would be that would be really nice. And um, yeah, anywhere in the in the football league is is elite level of, yeah. of football, really. 
Um, and so I would, I would thoroughly enjoy going. What do you think it takes to go from like where you are now, like from someone who's National League to that next level up? Is it just the small things like making that save that maybe someone else wouldn't make? It's the small things. Um, I think there's a million different factors. Sometimes you save the ball, sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. Certain people are watching. Sometimes managers see you in one way and see people in another, but perhaps they've got the same yeah the same ability. There's a all the keepers in this league are really good. The keepers yeah. in the league above are really good. And, League above that, they really mm. good. Sometimes there isn't a huge, a, a huge gap. Because um, your brother, I think uh, Luca, he's at Stockport, and uh, so obviously he's playing to the level. I think they're they're right at the top of the table. Um, have you spoke to him much? How has he found playing this level as well? Yeah, I think he's really enjoyed it. It's a good crack from the lads that he's up with there. And he's yeah. a great crack here that I have at Bournemouth. Um, yeah, he's he's thoroughly enjoyed it. They've done really well this season, and um, hopefully they can see yeah. the deal there for their last game. I think they just need to drop the reason. Yeah, he's really enjoyed that. Do you think it's a shame that um, Bournemouth didn't come so close to getting at least in the playoffs? Because obviously, I think um, I think when you look at it, the Everton was such a pinnacle. I suppose you gave everything to that, but I suppose it was then hard to keep going in the league, and maybe that's what led to a drop off. Maybe who knows? But um, yeah, it's a great group of lads, and they would have really deserved to have mm. had that run and had a great um, finish higher up the table. Um, the manager's been great here, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my time, and would have loved to have. Finish, yeah. finished higher up and I'm sure everyone would, would say the same. Um, yeah, we had a great run up to Everton and then slightly dropped off and it's a shame really. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, the lads have been great and I've really enjoyed my time. Yeah. Just last couple of questions. I mean, um, people often say that you have to enjoy something and be passionate about it to enjoy it, but that doesn't mean to say that it's going to be tough at times. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you pick yourself up from when you were quite sure that you were going to go up, maybe at some point get promoted with Boring Woods, um, how, how do you stay motivated? How do you keep going despite the fact that tough times can show up? I think all the lads just love playing, playing, playing football. I reckon um, you got to be, you got to be strong mm. to to come back from those tough times and just just keep putting yourself out there. Believe you can do yeah. it again. Keep it back once, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, keep just keep going. Um, but I think yeah, it's it's difficult for anyone when you go through those those tough periods and then to to come out of come out of that and start winning again. Yeah. Um, but I think all the guys have got great character and they're all um, all believe believe in themselves. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I think it's, it is it is difficult, but I think it's a good group of lads. And, yeah. And just to finally wrap it up, I mean, if there was a goalkeeper watching the other side of the world in a different country, um, someone who's a young teenager might have just been released, um, or they're maybe early 20s like yourself, what would be your number one piece of advice if they walked in the room now and they sort of said, like, what, what can I do just to go to that next level? Uh, what, what's your one piece of advice you give to any goalkeeper? Mm. Just, just got to keep working. So keep, find your own way. Um, there is there is no wrong way and you can just keep working hard at your techniques and and playing games where you can um, analyze the stuff that you are doing um, and sometimes people they don't they don't get there and, and some people do um, I might one day wish to play in the Premier League it might be a yeah, hard yeah. task for me now um, often the path is different how you first envision it first absolutely yeah um, and any level in the Football league and, and national is an unbelievable level of football. So for anyone to reach that is is an achievement unto itself. Yeah. Um, but for keepers coming on on tough times, if, if it's um, just have to keep 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 trying hard and, yeah, yeah. and keep working your stuff and hopefully one day if that's what people uh, want to achieve, that they that they get that. But yeah. Um, from my from my point of view, when I was young, maybe I wanted to say that I wanted to play in Champions League or in yeah. Premier League. Um, if I end up not getting that and I'm not going to take that too seriously. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so it's being realistic but still saying optimistic to go to the highest level you can go to. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure, but um, sometimes it's not about reaching the the, the very top. Mm. Sometimes just about you know, just in, enjoying, enjoying playing wherever you are. Yeah. When it's, there's, there'll be tough moments and good times and just about um, taking those in and um, as much fun as possible. Yeah, definitely. That's that's really good. I think there's a lot of insight there. Uh, people need to take one idea from that. I think it's worth their time. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, do give it a like, click subscribe, 
and uh, Tay, thanks for doing the interview. No, thank you really very much. much. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you.